Hello, today we dive deep into the realm of power circuits, specifically focusing on a widely utilized circuit, the flyback converter. Known for its efficiency and adaptability, the flyback converter can pose some challenges during setup for simulation. In this video, we'll uncover these common hiccups and learn how to troubleshoot them effectively. Let's delve right in. Here's our flyback converter circuit that takes in a nominal voltage of 24 volts and it's designed to output 5 volts capable of sourcing around 1.6 amps. The circuit is simulated using a SPICE model file of a popularly used real controller that is set at 265 kHz switching frequency. In this simulation, we aim to identify potential issues that could occur in a flyback design and find suitable solutions. So I'm going to go to my simulation dashboard, verify my circuit by choosing start verification, and then enter my analysis setup and run, running the simulation for six milliseconds, I want to see the output voltage. I hit run, And initially, on running a transient analysis, it's clear that the circuit isn't functioning as expected. The time step is too small, according to this error. This suggests a convergence problem for the circuit solver. The resolution lies in employing realistic component values and parameters, incorporating equivalent series resistances, and adjusting parameters, tolerances, and even sometimes advanced settings. Now, our flyback designer has left some advice based on his simulations from a different program. So let's follow the schematic engineer's advice and modify these advanced settings. In the simulation dashboard, we'll click on the settings, then go to advanced. Here we alter the absolute tolerance to 1e to the minus 10. Likewise for G min. We'll set relative tolerance to 0 0.003. And if your software provides it, you can set your C shunt value to 1e to the minus 15. You can adjust the integration method for your power electronic circuit, but trapezoidal should be okay. Once these settings are adjusted, remember to check the use initial conditions setting. And just a quick note, you want to make sure that this mask is completely over the load so that it goes completely gray and uh, doesn't turn on. Okay, now that we've run the transient analysis again, our circuit is now simulating successfully. However, please note that these simulation issues are best resolved by relaxing the circuit, which might involve adding mega ohm sized parallel resistors across your diodes, capacitances, and even temporarily removing series capacitances to aid the solver in converging. Our next issue arises from the expected output. Our designer anticipated the circuit to output 5 volts, but we're not quite there yet. We're hovering around 4.5 volts. A possible culprit, the transformer's turns ratio. In a flyback, using the correct turns ratio can make all the difference. Let's adjust the number of turns of the transformer on the secondary side, labeled as NS, on our schematic from 5 to 2 and run the transient simulation again. This parameter is part of the SPICE model for this transformer. Now from the results, you can see that the transformer plays a critical role in the flyback converter design. After the adjustment, the output voltage hovers around five volts despite the significant peak-to-peak -peak ripple voltage. But how does this circuit perform under realistic conditions, such as changing load? How can we test the robustness of the control loop and the controller 
for overload current. The answer is to add a transient load that stresses the circuit to a certain extent. So let's unmask the pulsed current load here and rerun the transient simulation. Okay, so I'm going to add the current to the plot. The current is coming from I1, so I place I1 here on the same plot, but on its own axis since it's current. Then run my simulation. Okay, so I run my simulation and impressively, this controller responds quite swiftly to low transients, managing a settling time of just half a millisecond. There's a little bit of undershoot, uh, but it recovers the output voltage quite quickly to keep it approximately around five volts. Not bad at all. All right, so I've covered the main steps you'd consider to troubleshoot and correct a flyback converter design. Thanks for watching.